What's good, YouTube? Bobby here, back with another Squidio. Um, I'm here doing a deck profile for my Kashtira deck. Uh, I got top four at Montreal Regionals yesterday. I went 7-1. Uh, I believe it was 165 players, something like that. Um, yeah, it, it was a well-run event. Uh, got the deck box, got this mat here. Uh, nice mat. And uh, yeah, uh, Vancouver's two weeks away, so Asada's is a good way to test uh to test for for vancouver um of course playing castilla because that's what i've been playing for the last six months uh didn't really want to stray from that uh first of all just want to give a shout out to uh my sponsor uh so mjs collectibles you can find them on ebay and on uh, tcg player best uh, sponsor ever so thank you for that um and uh yeah so i also want to give a shout out to the uh, cooking lab uh group chat and uh, carta magica for hosting a great regional and uh, yeah, so I'll get right into the deck profile. Uh, so, of course, played the triple Fenrir double unicorn, uh, super standard, that's never gonna change. Uh, for this event, I went with triple Rise Heart. Um, so you'll see later, I wasn't playing Forbidden Lance. Uh, I really don't like Forbidden Lance. I feel like it contributes to your dead hands and you're basically just hoping, you're hoping that they have a Book of Moon when you draw Lance really, because that's, that's all you're really trying to stop with it. Like the imperms don't really hurt you that bad, to be honest. Um, so decided to go for triple rise heart because this is kind of one of the only ways that when you special unicorn or Fenrir and they book it, it's kind of one of the only ways that you can still fully go off or at least somewhat go off. Uh, so this just felt a lot better than Lance and it also unbricks your hand. So if you draw obviously the spells with rise heart, uh, you're able to play at least, you know, make a rise heart pass at the minimum. Uh, and then just the one scare clock cash tira. So that's it for the cash monsters. Um, for the rest of the engine, uh, super standard. Uh, this will never change, never play less than this. Nothing needs to be said there. Uh, Triple Prosperity. Um, I was considering playing Pot of Desires, but there honestly just wasn't space in the deck. Uh, the 55 cards that I play, it's super, super tight already. Um, Desires, I think, is definitely something that I want to try playing some more with, uh, just to see if it does kind of help to unbrick some hands and if the downside's not too bad. Uh, but for this event, with, with Triple Prosperity, uh, definitely brick sometimes, because that's what Kashira does, but generally, uh, the games that you don't brick, you're able to uh, have a pretty good win rate. So. Um, so, even though the Montreal meta doesn't have that much Purely and Kashira, they are the two best decks, so I did want to respect them. Um, books aren't really that great <laughs> otherwise in the meta, except maybe versus like Melfi Sprite, uh, versus like Rescue Ace maybe, uh, which I did play those two decks at least. Um, but yeah, this was, I was really trying to test for YCS Vancouver and I'm pretty sure I'm going to play six books at Vancouver. I might play five, maybe cut one for Desires or something. Um, but yeah, I wanted to test for Vancouver and basically see that, you know, if like if the Book of Moons and the Book of Eclipses serve me well in this tournament when I'm not facing that much purely and Kashira, then I definitely want to have them in Vancouver for those later rounds where I'm more likely to face Kashira uh, and purely. So uh, they were good. I mean, I sided them out a lot because there's a lot of link matchups right now that, you know, these don't do anything in. So, but, you know. Uh, and then I decided to play double cyclone. So I had two slots in the deck and like I said, the 55 cards are super tight, but I wanted to have these at least in my side deck. And it basically got to a point where I was like, okay, which cards from my side deck can I move to the main deck? Uh, because I kind of knew what 55 cards I wanted to go into the tournament with. Um, and I had two slots in the main. So I ended up moving the cyclones to the main. Uh, they're really good going first against a lot of matchups, obviously. Um, even stuff like Dragon Link, obviously Cash Tira, Purely, etc., uh, Runic. Um, but even going second, they hit the Book of Moons, uh, which is nice. I, I like this card more than Lance, to be honest. Lance, just for me, has never performed well. I know some people have some really great su success with it, but yeah, I decided to play the Cyclones over Lance. Uh, didn't really regret it. They were great. Uh, and then for the Hand Trap lineup, um, I played the nine best Hand Traps. Um, Droll, Nibiru, Mourner, to me, those aren't really main deckable right now. Um, they're okay, but I decided for this tournament, I wanted to go with the nine best hand traps. Uh, they were great, uh, gives you the coverage that you need. Shifter and Blossom are so important for like the Chimera matchup and stuff like that. I think that deck is really, really powerful and it needs 
to be respected. So there's no way that I would ever remove uh, the ash just given how good it is across the board. Um, so yeah, that was it for the main deck. Um, I'll go to, I guess I'll go to the side deck first. Um, so this might be the last tournament that I play Ghost Spells at. Uh, Ghost Spells has been in my side since I first started playing Kashtira. Uh, just because we don't really have access to the Bestials and there's a whole lot of other cards in Kashtira that we can't really play. Stuff like uh, Retaliating C and Kurikara, just things that kind of conflict with the actual deck. This is one of the few cards that gives you coverage um, for things like Branded, Mathmec, Labyrinth, uh, Rika even. Um, but I find it's kind of low impact and the Labyrinth players now are playing Solemn Strike. Um, they're playing Cross Out Designator. So even when you draw the outs, uh, sometimes they have the out to your out. Um, and this just doesn't get sided in enough, I think, uh, to justify the three slots anymore. Um, I think there's other cards that maybe will give me better coverage across different matchups. So yeah, this might be the, the last tournament that I play with Bell. Uh, it, it had zero impact again. Uh, it had zero impact at the last regional that I played. Um, and at Nats and Philly, um, even though I performed well, I, I don't feel like these cards were that impactful. So, um, yeah, they, they might, they might leave. Uh, three Joel on the other hand, obviously I feel like this card is super important to have in your side deck. Uh, it's just, I played against two Flunderies and this card was fantastic in both of those matchups. Uh, obviously stuff like Dragon Link, Manadium, etc. You just want to have it, you just want to have it in your side deck because... The decks that it's good against, it's really, really, really good against. Um, so yeah, I feel like this card is just basically a must to have in your side deck. It could be main deck, but when you're starting with cards like Shifter or you're starting with a board that ends on a Rise Heart, this card's just kind of awkward. Um, so yeah, just not my favorite card in the main deck. Um, okay, so for my Go Second package, um, I decided to go with a Thrust package. Um, so I tried out, I tried out Lava Golem, I tried out Evenly Matched, uh, I considered Dark Ruler no more. Um, I always like to have really good, powerful Go Second cards in my decks when I, uh, when I enter a tournament. Uh, so I feel like, I feel like right now the Thrust Package is probably the best we got, unfortunately. Um, evenly Matched is okay, but it's just not impactful enough and they get to keep the most important card, usually the, usually the one that you want to get rid of stays on the field anyways uh lava golem is just a little bit awkward right now there's a lot of decks that put up one monster uh or that put up too many monsters for two to really make a difference and you lose your normal summon um the thrust package is just very very powerful into a lot of different matchups you can basically side this in against every matchup even the herald of abyss like it like i sided this in against like a sword soul player and i called a uh, worm light and you know got rid of one of his interruptions i mean it's it's just it's just a it's just a very versatile package that you can even side in going first versus certain matchups like the cybers matchups um and uh along with the d barriers as well um which i feel like d barrier right now is kind of a must uh i feel like you have to side side these cards just to respect the purely matchup um and the chimera matchup so to me chimera is probably the third or fourth best deck right now uh, it is very, very, very good, and it's very good against Kashira for similar reasons that Vanquish Shoal is good against Kashira. Basically, if we can't kill them right away, they generate so much advantage that it's really hard for us to keep up with them. I mean, like, our plays, you know, can generate plus one, plus two, whatever, but they're just gaining so much advantage, and the Guardian Chimera is a problem. Their graveyard effects are a real problem. I mean, Coatl is just ridiculous, and <laughs> so is Sword Knight. Um, I played against Chimera last round, um... And I mean, I opened up Shifter Ash both games, I think. So I 2 would him quick, but uh, without without Shifter Ash, without drawing your hand traps, it's such a rough matchup. So I feel like the D barriers are really needed uh, because they're they're even good, you know, going second versus some of those matchups. So yeah, they're, they're just very, very flexible, very good uh, versus obviously Branded, uh, Chimera, even Synchro Dex, uh, even Melfi Sprite. This card's great into. Um, so yeah, that's the side deck. And then finally, uh, just the extra deck. Uh, nothing too much to say here. Still the double Shangri-Ra. Uh, don't feel like you need three. Obviously, a Rise Heart, the best card in the deck. Uh, and then for my 
rank seven package, uh, pretty light on the package. There's not much cash Tira in Montreal, first of all, and I've never really been a fan of playing doubles of Big Eye or of Dark Armed. I feel like they rip one of them and usually the other one gets the job done or something like this gets the job done um, or the Shangri-La, you know, Arise Hard Zeus stuff. So to me, I never really saw the point of playing two ofs. I've never needed it. I feel like I've never lost a game because of it. I mean, maybe the odd game here and there, but uh, not enough to really warrant a spot. Um, so this is obviously very important for the lab matchup. Uh, it did come up uh, popping skill drain. So yeah, super important. You just, you know, make sure that they don't have the, you know, lady with like a big welcome in grave uh, when that's happening. Um, but yeah, uh, I just feel like you kind of need this. Um, it also enables just like weird plays sometimes where you get to like summon two tokens, tribute summon while you pop a card. Uh, there's just like a lot of niche interactions. And then uh, this card here is just for the four material Zeus. Uh, it comes up versus stuff like the sprite matchup, uh, the lab matchup even, uh, just basically whenever it can run over something um, and you get to attach it as a material, you get to go into a four material Zeus and that's super powerful, obviously. Um, obviously burn the floor. Uh, and then Donner, obviously very important. Uh, decided to play Lingaribo. Like I said, um, well, the Montreal meta just has quite a bit of Sprite, quite a bit of Melfi Sprite, and I did see a few Iblis in the room. Uh, since we only have to play one of them now that Diablosis is gone, uh, I feel like it warrants the spot. Um, without Lava Golem in the side deck, it is a little bit different than it used to be because we used to be able to go link into Lingaribo and then give them Lava Golem and then crash into it. Uh, now, if they don't have a link monster on the board, you're not really going to be able to crash the Lingaribo, which means this is still kind of stifling your plays a bit. But at least if you do open the right combination of cards, like a Rise Heart Theosis, a Rise Heart Birth, um, something like that, at least you can still play if you go into the Lingaribo. Uh, and the Lingaribo also uh, can, you know, negate traps, which is good. Uh, double cross and like impairment stuff. Uh, and then finally for the Prosperity targets, so I took this card out of my extra deck, but I put it back in because Mirror Jade's in the format and this can help against Mirror Jade, uh, against the destruction effect, I mean, of course. Um, also, obviously against Runic. Um, and there are some people that are playing stuff like Dark Hole. Um, I think Dark Hole has some decent applications in the format right now. Brageki as well, I saw going around. And uh, yeah, so just felt like I wanted it back in there just as a generic attach. Um, this is definitely the flex spot of the deck, I'd say, uh, of the, the extra deck, I'd say. Uh, and then these two. Um, so I don't really like Garura or Entis uh, because let's say they do something like Kaiju Yu and you trigger a, a Garura draw. Uh, then they get to like Kaiju Yu and TTT Yu, which is just like so absurd. Um, Garura drawing a card is less relevant in my deck because I don't really play that many hand traps. Um, and the Entis pop play does come up sometimes, but with Dark Ruler out, uh, the whole detach Entis when they Dark Ruler your Arise Hard play doesn't really come up as much. Um, so yeah, these two super important, I feel. This one here is mostly to deal with uh, Zeus on the opponent's turn. Uh, usually, you know, you'll have played out your hand, you might not have any more books or any more Imperms in hand, so the Zeus is kind of oppressive unless you have something like a uh, Skull Knight. Uh, and then Skull Wagon uh, is obviously for the back row decks. Uh, I feel like I want to respect Labyrinth, uh, at least with my extra deck. Um, I mean, I do respect it with the side deck as well. I have the Lightning Storm, I have the Duster uh, and the Thrust, and I have the Cosmics in the main, but um, some extra coverage in the extra deck never hurts. So that's that. And uh, that's the deck. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, thanks uh, Squiddy for uh, letting me make this profile and for posting it up on your channel and uh yeah that's all